So let's talk about this required practical all to do with sampling. So this is different ways of assessing how a population changes. We're going to talk about two. Now, um, there's uh, different ways of doing this, lots of different ways you can do this. I'm going to talk through the two, two most common. So um, nearly every way that I can think of it involves using one of these. This is a quadrat. And essentially it is, it's a square, essentially. Um, some of them are fancy. I don't know if you can see very well on this on this uh, particular photo, but this one has got a, a uh, like a wire net inside. That can be quite helpful for something we'll talk about in a minute. But most of the ones that I've ever seen being used in the school don't have that, obviously, because it costs that little bit extra. So um, let's say that you want, looking at a, um, like a forest, and you wanted to see how um, the grass coverage varies with light intensity. Well, you would use your quadrat to do something called a transect. Let me explain what I mean. So first of all, this is an artist's rendition of a forest and a grassy field from above. Yes, okay, not great, but you know, I, I do my best, I do. What a transect is, is it is where you go along a straight line with your um, quadrat. So like so, you'd, you'd pick a, a line like this and you would do your survey along this line here. So you might start at this point here and then you would place your quadrat as you go along, taking a surveys as you go. Now, I talked about uh, grass coverage. So what you might be looking at here is you might be looking at something like percentage coverage of your quadrant. Now, how might you do that? Well, what you would do is this fancy one has like got a grid on it, so it makes it a little bit more accurate. You would um, uh, take a look at it. It's uh, 10 squares by 10 squares. So uh, that one's filled in with grass, that one's filled in with grass, that one's filled in with grass. And then you would see how many of these little squares have been filled in with grass and you would come to a bit of a, well, it would, it would only be an estimate really a bit more accurate than if you've got the sort without the grid. Now, I said it's how grass coverage varies with light intensity. So what you would do as you go along that is you would take um, light uh, readings with um, this device here with a light meter, and then you would see how the, uh, the level of uh, grass coverage changed as it got brighter and darker. You'd then go away and you'd probably plot it onto a line graph that looked like this because both light intensity and percentage grass coverage, they are continuous variables. That means they can be of any value, which means that you need a um, line graph. You will probably find that where the light is very low, so down here you will find low grass coverage, and then you would find that as the light level then went up, you would get an increasing degree of coverage, something that would look roughly like that. And your results would show that increasing light levels uh, in leads to increased graph, uh, graph, graph, grass coverage. Something like that. I, I would imagine your results look like that. Of the two ways of using a, a quadrat, that's probably the, uh, the easiest of the two. So that was uh, the transect method that we've just talked about. And that really is for looking at, at variation with another variable, so like light like levels. The other way is to do a population estimate. And this one is a, a little bit more mathsy. So what you do is you get your, your quadrat that we were talking about earlier, this thing, and you go to a grassy field and you start plonking it down and you start counting daisies. So you might have a field, again, artist rendition of a field just here, and then you might get down your quadrats. Now this is the important bit, it's gotta be a random throw. So you might perhaps walk out into the field and like drop it over behind you, something like that. I have seen people throw it like a Frisbee, that's never to be encouraged. 
you would plonk it down like that and then you would have a count of how many days is oops how many days is are within that area there okay you could then use that to work out uh, an estimate of how many daisies were in the entire area. Now, I was going to draw hundreds of daisies in my little drawing, uh, but I got bored after about 30. In reality, you could be talking about an awful lot of daisies. Now, this is this is an, actually an, leads us on to an important point here. You are going to do multiple quadrats. OK, so I'll just write that down. Multiple quadrats. And these are going to lead to you calculating a mean value. OK, this is why it's an estimate. It's not going to be what you come up with is not going to be the exact count of daisies within an area. It's going to be a mean. And this sort of leads us on to thinking about this little idea here. If you do millions and millions of samples within an area, OK, that's just something of an ex exaggeration. The mean that you uh, generate and your eventual estimate of the number of daisies will be down this end because you will have probably ended up surveying the vast majority of the field by that point. If you do one quadrat, well, that's really fast, but you may have hit an area with uh, a larger than normal number of daisies or a smaller than number number of daisies. So really, it's a it's a with all population surveys, it's a balance between getting it exactly right and doing it quickly, because obviously the ultimate way of doing a population estimate is to get on your hands and knees, crawl about and count every single daisy. But that would obviously take forever. Now, this one gets a little bit mathsy. So let's uh, let's get some numbers and we'll have a bit of a play with these. So you'd want a results table like this. So quadrat number and number of daisies and you'd go out and you would do your survey and you'd end up with some results that looked like that. You would then need to calculate a mean. Let's just do that really quick. So we've got 20 plus 15 plus 16 plus 24 plus 18 plus 22. Notice that I put it all in brackets because when I'm calculating a mean, I need to sum together all of those values before I divide by six. Uh, so I'll go to one decimal place here, 19.2 being my average. So that every quadrat, so uh, so one quadrat would be, one quadrat of area would equal 19.2 days. Right. Now we need to get a little bit more mathsy to try and come up with an estimate. So let's pick up some values. Let's say that my field that I am surveying Let's call that 20 meters by 40 meters. OK, so job number one, we need to work out the total area of the field. So then that will be uh, 20 divided by 40, uh, sorry, 20 divided by 40, 20 meters times by 40 meters, which means that the total area of the field would be 20 times 40. 800, 800 meters squared. Right, that's thing number one. Thing number two is I need to find out what the area of one quadrat is. So going back to my little diagram at the start, uh, most of the ones that I've ever used have been like 0 0.5 meters and uh, to a side like that, 0 0.5 meters. So that will be 0 0.5 meters times by 0 0.5 meters, which means that the total area of one quadrat would be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.25. So it'd be 0 0.25 meters squared. Okay, now, Part number three. So how many quadrats could fit in our field? OK, so if you completely quadrated the entire field, how many would that be? So for that, we're going to want the total area of the field divided by the total area of our quadrat. Oops, missed the M there total area of our quadrat, which means that you could fit 800 divided by 0 0.25, 
3,200 quadrats into the field. So that would be the maximum number if you just laid them down regularly, end to end to end to end to end, and covered the entire field. That was 3,200. 3,200 quadrats big. So that's how many quadrats could fill up the field without overlapping. So we said that one quadrat was 19.2 daisies. So if it's 19, whoops, 19.2 um, daisies, I can't spell today, per quadrat, and I have 3,200 quadrats that cover my entire field, that would be 19.2 times 3,200. So that would be a total population estimate then of 61,440. 61,440 daisies in my field. Now it goes without saying, again, this is an estimate. Okay. Out of a possible 3,200 quadrats that I could have done without overlapping, I did six. So this estimate will probably not be massively accurate. In the grand scheme of things, it's probably going to be more down towards this end. But that's the point. It's an estimate. Okay, so that you don't have to go out and count up an entire population. So two ways of sampling. You can see how a population changes as a factor like light intensity varies, or you can try and estimate the population within an area. Thank you very much.